today we tend to take it for granted, living indoors at a comfortable, even temperature. In winter especially, central heating has really changed our lives quite dramatically. Without it, people had to spend hours carting coal about, lighting fires, keeping fires going, and they still had to wear masses of clothes indoors. But to make a heating system that's completely automatic and reliable has taken an enormous amount of effort and ingenuity. I hope to tell you something about how these systems evolved and how they work in this programme. Even lighting a simple fire isn't at all easy without modern gadgets like lighters or matches. One of the most effective methods used in many parts of the world is the bow drill. It's much better than the Boy Scout method of rubbing sticks together. But even this requires a lot of skill and practice, and I haven't managed to make it work myself, despite spending a whole afternoon playing with it. Even speeding up the rotation with an electric drill... The friction is creating a hot, powdery charcoal, which in theory can make a bit of tinder catch light. This looks much more hopeful, but I've never actually managed to get a flame out of it, despite trying all sorts of different types of tinder. Well, the ancient civilizations, including the Romans, very sensibly never let their fires go out if they could possibly help it. At first, the Romans simply had a fire in the middle of their living room. The Latin for hearth is focus. The fire was literally the focus of the room. But they probably had trouble with smoke, as the Latin for living room is atrium, from atta meaning black. So they started putting the fire outside in a furnace with cavities under the floors and in the walls. But the Romans were rather decadent and just as they were getting comfortable, their civilization declined and fell. And houses once again became very smoky. The next attempt to improve matters was made by the Normans. They made holes in their castle walls and tried to funnel the smoke out sideways. Here we've built a horizontal chimney and you can see it doesn't really work very well. gases from a fire naturally rise and so to make a chimney draw it really has to point upwards. The Normans finally realized this in the 13th century when castles started to incorporate true chimneys. By the 18th century chimneys were regarded as indispensable in Britain and hardly any buildings were put up without them. Even Chiswick House, which was intended to be an exact replica of an Italian design by Palladio. At the last minute, the design was modified to include four large chimneys on each side. Lord Burlington had the house built after returning from the grand tour of Europe fired with an enthusiasm for Palladian architecture. But he obviously felt that comfort was more important than aesthetics. Although well-designed open fires made houses almost comfortable, this sort of heat was totally unsuitable for the tropical greenhouses that came into fashion in the 18th century. An even heat was required for the plants that was totally smoke-free. At first, the Roman system of central heating was revived. The only remains are these cast-iron chimneys disguised as urns. Fires were lit behind the greenhouse and the smoke was drawn up through cavities in the wall. The wall became hot and this created the warmth the plants needed. The 18th century was also the start of the Industrial Revolution and steam power was really the miracle of the age. So all the fires behind the walls were soon replaced by a central boiler. 
and uh, steam or hot water was fed through these enormous pipes that acted as radiators. And in fact, these systems are remarkably similar to the modern domestic central heating systems. These pipes take up much more space than today's small bore pipes and ultra-thin radiators, but the principle is really exactly the same.